Welcome to the Fast Flicks channel. My name's Jason, and today I'm making a video that I really did not want to make. And the reason is we just we just can't catch a break. We've got this beast of a tractor, the Aaron's uh, lawn tractor, which is a wonderful machine, except for this bit right here. Yeah, that's the Briggs and Stratton component that I'm not loving so much. And the reason is, is that the camshaft um, valve relief mechanism failed for the third time. So we have to pull the engine for the third time and we have to go through all of the crap involved in doing that, which honestly, it really isn't all that bad. At this point, I'm kind of a pro at it. Uh, I really just wish I could trash this engine and just start from scratch, buy something different, but we're gonna throw another 50 bucks at this thing, see if we can't fix it and get it running for the summer. And uh, we're just gonna kind of dive right in. I want you guys to see the process of getting the motor removed and um, just you know taking the cover off and all that good stuff. And we're gonna try to do it as fast as we possibly can. No problem. All right, let's get this thing removed. I already loosened these bolts, so that's why they're so easy. All right, we got all of our bolts out, so we just need to kind of pop this cover off. We're gonna use our trusty mallet to do just that. So kind of just pick, you know, one of these ears or so. splitting so that's a good thing oh look at this we got a bleeder we've got a bleeder ladies and gentlemen and I did drain the oil prior to doing this but <laughs> there's a lot left in that crankcase my gosh well screw it let's just continue on so here we go Got our part removed with nowhere to place it. All right, well, this is the inside, everybody. And um, yeah, I'm gonna have to clean up this oil slick first and then we will get back into it. Okay, everyone, we've got some developments. I went ahead and pulled the cover off and took the cam out. It was assuming we would have our valve release mechanism just in pieces as the other one was. In fact, here's a picture of uh, what the original camshaft looked like when I pulled it out. Here it is. Okay, and now for this one, it looks totally fine. I mean, it's 100% fine. There's nothing wrong with this. So that's a good thing. But that doesn't, that doesn't solve our problem. Why in the world does this engine not fire on its own? I mean, it does get compression lock. We know that for a fact, but we don't know why now. So went ahead and started looking around, uh, just kind of see if everything was in place, everything looks fine. And went over here to our cover, and this had a bunch of oil in it at the time. Just looking through it, and I don't know, do you guys see anything? Just give, it, give a couple seconds. Anything, anything Bueller? No, okay, it's this guy. This guy, I uh, was just sitting there, and I didn't know at the time what in the world this was. Uh, I know now, and I'm gonna show you guys how I figured it out. So just kind of coming back to, you know, our case here and looking around to see where that piece might fit, kind of thinking it was a counterbalance, you know, a counterweight or something like that. Check this out. This, this is a whole nother side issue, but look at that. You guys see that? That's a crack. We've got a crack in the case and man, I can't believe I didn't notice that before, but I didn't. And that is, I assume, from the original failure of the original cam. 
And like I said, this thing was in pieces, so it got beat around pretty good, and I assume that is a result. So pretty terrible. Uh, luckily for us, it doesn't extend to the outside, but uh, that is a problem. So that still does not answer our question why this engine wouldn't start. So coming up here to the top and just looking at the valve train and check this out. See a difference? Yep, this little guy comes off. It's like a little hat on the valve, valve stem. And this had worked itself off somehow. And, you know, it went down in the, in the oil return and ended up here. Well, ended up there. And so when I tried to set lash, um, top dead center, all that good stuff, it was just never going to work. Um, there's enough material here to make a significant difference in tolerance. So not only do we not have the surface area that this provides for the rocker arm to, um, you know, move against, but we also lost the height that this gives us too. So it was never going to work. It was always going to fail. And, you know, that is just something that I didn't notice when I put it back together or um, something else happened and it worked itself loose. And what, what's funny about that is I had such trouble with this thing last spring and when I fired it up after I had changed the cam, this made a terrible noise and I shut it off immediately, investigated further, and look at this push rod, just absolutely bent. And so I went ahead and replaced that last spring. This is a new push rod. And even during that process, I did not notice this cap was missing. So that's, that's pretty much on me uh, for not noticing that. Uh, at the same time, I'm going to go ahead and give myself a pass because I mean look at this this is how it would look in my point of view you just can't see it you know unless you're checking for it exactly you just wouldn't be able to see that was missing so you know it stinks and you know it, it, lesson learned but uh, that is the reason why this motor did not start so camshaft is perfectly fine we're gonna reuse it I will keep the new one I got because I assume this one will fail eventually probably a matter of, uh, I don't know, two summers or so before this one goes out. But uh, yeah, we're going to keep it. So we're gonna just going to put everything back together and we're going to test like crazy before we button everything up, make sure all of our parts are in place and we should be good to go, hopefully from there. So let's get started on the rebuild. All right, we're at a point where we can start putting stuff back together. Got the surface all cleaned up, nice and sparkly. So we're going to put our lifters in first and go from there. Just gonna spin the engine. And the reason to spin the engine is we gotta line some things up. Let me show you. So if you can see, one of those uh, cogs right there has a little dot on it, this guy. And so we have to line that dot up with the dot on the gear, which is right there. So that's what we'll do. And that's all there is to it. All right, got the motor upright again, and we're going to do the one thing that we didn't do last time. All set. All right, we're at the point where we can adjust lash or set lash. Uh, so we're gonna go to the intake side first and adjust it to point um, zero, zero, 003 thousandths. And um, the tolerance on this is two to four thousandths. And we're gonna shoot right in the middle at three. And hopefully this is the last time we do this. Yeah, it's pretty good. Our exhaust side is four to seven thousandths, so we're going to go for six. Good. All right, and quickly, I just wanted to show you guys how I'm kind of spinning this motor just to check everything. Just using a drill, and keep in mind, the engine needs to spin clockwise. Now, this is on most engines anyway, small engines. And clockwise from the perspective of the flywheel, which would be the front of the engine. So we need it to spin this way 
And then when we're looking at it on this direction, it'll actually be turning counterclockwise. So um, here's a little demo of what that looks like. That's it. And it looks good. We should be all set. All right, we are ready to button everything up. A few things you need to do, of course. Um, likely your oil pump shaft fell out. So we're gonna wanna put that guy back in. If you don't do that, big troubles for you. And, and again, this is where gravity is our friend. So that's why we have the engine horizontally mounted right now. We'll put our governor back on. Should've done that first. It's pretty simple. Don't drop this. This kind of rests on this arm right here. We'll put our shaft right here. Whether or not that stays, we'll see. But I think I can be gentle enough in order to get it to stay. Now, all we got to do at this point, I'm going to run some uh, RTV around the seam here, and then we'll put the cover on. All right, with our sealant down, we can put the gasket back on or in place. All right, should be all set. I'll take our cover here. I already got RTV on this, and we'll just simply need to set it down. This can be the trick. This can be a trickier part. Um, sometimes these don't sit perfectly and you kind of have to move things around but you know hopefully we get lucky and it just goes right on for us we'll see so typically this is what you're going to run into we're just going to have a gap here and we need to kind of finesse this around in order to get it to drop sometimes you need a dead blow and just lightly tap It's going down. We still got a little, little gap here. So I went ahead and took the oil pump cover off and pulled out our gear here. And just kind of thinking that the shaft was causing the impediment. And so pulled that out too. And we'll just install this when we get the cover on. It really doesn't matter. You, you can do it this way. It's no problem. But I'm just trying to eliminate things that could potentially um, be causing the cover not to fall. So now that those components are out, I'm gonna tap it some more and see if that did the trick. Mostly did the trick. We got still a little bit of a gap, but we're gonna get it. Halfway time to just run a bolt through and kind of snug it up. Yep, and that's that's doing that's doing the trick. So we're just gonna run a couple bolts through, and that should solve our problem. Yep, we're good. Okay, everything is working well now. So uh, we're gonna put the oil pump back in, and we'll go from there. And one final test to make sure it spins freely. Looks like we're good. Now just torquing these. Uh, you will need an inch pound torque wrench. These are torqued at 220 inch pounds. All right, that should do it. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if it starts. And that's it. Absolutely great. Almost forgot. All right, everyone, that's basically it. This really wasn't a how-to video, more of just a venting video that I needed to make 
in order to complain about a common failure on these Briggs and Stratton engines. If this happens to you, you are not alone. It's happened to me twice. So if it hasn't happened to you, consider yourself lucky, but your days are probably numbered. Anyway, if this video helped you, please help me hit like and subscribe. It makes a world of difference. I appreciate it. Have a great rest of the day.